Okay, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, has put in my heart to speak, to go through this uh, report, the three years. And this is exciting, very exciting. Much more clarification. The three years are decoded. And um, this really shows us exactly the signs of the times, where we are and what is happening. If we're able to see what is going on around us in the physical world, uh, and of course, n must having to know the spiritual world of what is going on. We can find this in the secular news, of course, the behavior of humanity, and we can see this in our own lives. And the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, He reveals to us these things of where we are in the timeline. And when we walk with Christ, we really get into the warfare. We feel the mourning, as uh, Paul writes in Romans, we, we see... Also in Romans, how Paul writes, how the um, what we can see, uh, what is inside the flesh, the uh, the fragmentation, the situation that we're having, that we're in. Paul says that I'm ready. To, uh, uh, I, I'm ready unto death right now. I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering. So he's at the point of death, meaning spiritually he's dead to the world. He's at the point of death. He said, "That's where." God is leading us and bringing us and when we're the closer we are with God the more in the warfare we are the more we feel this thing now not everybody I guess is going to feel it of course not uh, and God even says to uh, that he's not going to that it, those who have been given much they will be required much uh, required of uh, in, in many things in much those that have not been given those who have been given uh, a little bit will be re will be required a little bit, have a little bit. Now, I'd like to speak regarding the uploading of the videos. Uh, the one video that I did first here, I'd like to talk about this, um, was uh, King Cyrus uh, versus Donald Trump. Many comparisons and infallible truths and proofs. And that video was uh, recorded approximately maybe five days or so before uh, it was uploaded because I don't have internet. So, this is it's a slow process. Uh, however, uh, God is really putting us through a lot of fire and trials right now. So, um, we must meditate on, on in the Lord Jesus Christ in all things and have uh, discernment of, of what God is doing. So, God is doing all things. It's all God. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against the principalities, wicked principalities in higher places. So, I'd like to get into this report. Uh, this here was September 28, 2015. That was the sixth day, the sixth year of the seven-year cycle. Now, in uh, Leviticus 25, 21 to 22, Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year. It shall bring forth fruit for three years. And you shall sow the eighth year and eat of the old fruit until the ninth year until her fruits come in, you shall eat of the old store. This, re this is speaking regarding a human being, the soul of an individual. That's what this is speaking regarding. Now, regarding the sixth year, so, beginning here, it says the ninth year is until the ninth year, until her fruits come in, is 2019. That's the beginning of 2019. Now, when that year begins, in Hebrew calendars, we know that the Hebrew calendar begins in Nisan, that begins approximately March or April, depending on whether it's a pregnant year or not. In the pagan Gregorian calendar. So, exactly when it starts, we, we, uh, we ha if we follow the new moons, we know the Jubilee year is, was in 1967. We know that the last Jubilee year is past. That, was in 20, that began from 2017. That's the second day. Uh, and the first day of the first of the year of the first uh, seven year cycle, the first year of the seven year cycle, but it is also the second year that is mentioned here because there's a carryover after the Sabbath day. That's what this means. So these verses also regard the salvation of God for His covenant children. Okay, so so so. God is saying to his, you shall sow this. So everyone, it also means everyone to their rewards, the entire universe, the four corners of the earth. Everyone. He's talking to the covenant, and of course the gospel is preached throughout the entire world. 
And so God is judging the entire world. In Leviticus 25, and I, I could add that here as well. I could add that there because um, God gives me revelation as we go, as I, as, as I go through it again. So it's also regarding the salvation of God and the judgment. Okay. Uh, the, uh, I'm just going to do this for now. And I'll get back to it. Okay. So, here it says, um, for, um, in Leviticus 25, 21 to 22, the three years begin after the sixth year yields all the crops. Okay. So, God says, I'm going to bring a, 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 I'll command a blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. So this begins, it could be the entire year, it could begin on the Day of Atonement. Okay? So the salvation of God for His covenant children. So in Leviticus 21, 22, the three years, because there's a civil year after the Day of Atonement. Begins a civil year, begins a different year. The three years begin after the sixth year yields all the crops. And then the seventh year begins. So this is so there is no plowing or sowing after the Day of Atonement. Okay? After the Day of Atonement, there's no plowing, there's no sowing. And then the new year begins, it would be the Passover, Nisan will begin a new year. That is the official new year in Exodus 12, uh, 1. I think it's 1 or 2 or 3 in Exodus 12. It says this is the first, this will be, this month will be the first month of the year for you. And so that's what God, that's what we're, what we're going to with. That's, that is the, um, the guideline for, for prophecy, for the Bible. Uh, now, for Bible prophecy. Now, uh, and of course the Bible is the only book. There is no other book. The Bible is an almanac. Uh, it is a future telling book. There's no dice. God breathed and God protects the book. God upholds the book. God upholds the Bible and He reveals through His Holy Spirit. The only way we can understand the Bible is through His Holy Spirit. So there is no plowing or sowing after the Day of Atonement of that sixth year. That sixth year is 2015, pagan calendar. And six is the number of man, Exodus 40, verse 5, or Ezekiel 40, verse 5. So I can settle in here. And um, this is, this is, there's a, Amazing information in this paragraph. Revelation 21, 17 is the measurement of a man. So in the sixth day was the spirit of man himself. So this is the Pharaoh. This is the first three horses of the Revelation to obey the collecting of manna. Revelation 22, 12. That's the measurement of man. And uh, Revelation says here, 20, 20, Lo, I come quickly to give each man according to his works. The rewards are for a man. What we sow, our works. Okay? So, certainly we have tons and tons and tons of lifting to do. And uh, most, of, most of that is spiritual. And the year after, in Christ, and the year after is the seventh year and the 49th year of the 50 year cycle. So that's the Sabbath day. It's the year of prayer, the year of growth, of entering into the rest of Almighty God. Leviticus 25, 8 to 10 speaks regarding the seven-year cycles, the seven sevens. So, this three years begins on a Sabbath year. This begins on a Sabbath year. So, you got rest. The seventh year is right in here. In this paragraph, that's the seventh year. And then you shall sow the eighth year and eat the old fruit until the ninth year, until her fruits come in. Okay, so what's the fruit? Well, the fruit, the Bible says that he who uh, watches over a fig tree will eat of its fruits, you know, watches over the, you know, his, his works, his ministry with people, shall eat of, the, of his fruits. They shall prophesy to the person. And, and, and we're going to also reap the benefits from that person. And those who guard, and he who guards his master 
shall be honored, and that's the cross of Christ. So these are the fruits, speaking, the fruits that come in is the fruits of the covenant children, the fruits of humanity, and that is 2009, until the ninth year. So, so the seventh year is the 49th year, that was 2016, 2016, 2017, year of the 50 year, uh, the 49th year of the 50 year cycle and Sabbath year of prayer, growth of entering into the rest of God Almighty. 2016, that is 2016, the seventh year is, is, I just, this is just fresh, is 2017, that equals the 50th year, and that's the eighth year, and the first year of the, of, of the new seven year cycle, and that's explained elsewhere, and the Jubilee year, because God is using uh, the number eight and nine. So he's speaking continuously. And Jubilee year. And 218 equals the 70th year also. Okay. Or 218. I'll just leave it like that. Yeah, I'm at 218. And 218 equals the 70th year. This 2017 also equals the Jubilee year spiritually. That's when the proclamation was made. Resolution 181 was made in 1947. So these are the three years, Sabbath year, Jubilee year, and 70th year, all lined up. Now, I didn't mention in this section, but in the, the other port mentions that this is the, the thing regarding this, the extra supernatural things that are happening. One of these major factors is that the Jubilee year cycles, every 350 years, the Jubilee cycles and lands on the first day of the week. Every 350 years because it's a 49-year cycle. It's a 50-year cycle in a 49-year cycle, so it walks one year of the seven-year cycle every year. And there's seven cycles. Every 50 years, it, it, it goes from one, one, one year of the seven-year cycle to the next. It takes 350 years for the Jubilee to go on to the first day of the week, and that is the official Jubilee year. That's when Jesus Christ rose. He rose the first day of the week, the first year of the seven-year cycle. So that's where we are right now. This is what God wants me to, to speak regarding. He's put this on my heart. I've been working on this report for several hours. Now, uh, in, uh, so the 70th year is 2018. Also, the ninth year is, is uh, the 70th year. Also, the ninth year. Uh, and the Jubilee years is also is that so so I was editing this um, so after three full years it's good to go over this uh, repeatedly as I do so uh, eighth year and Jubilee year and 2018 equals the 70th year so after three full years begins 2019 ending of the three years Okay, that just explains that. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. That, that equals the second year of a, se of a new seven-year cycle. So it's the second year. That's found in Isaiah 37.30, as you'll see here further down. Now, in the report. The... And God also calls that year the ninth year because a full trumpet cycle, time of dispensation, is 14 years. Okay? It's in this report here. Uh, the second year is very dual in many ways, also equals the second day, also of the week, second day of the week, also equals soul. Revelation 6, 3, 4. So the reader reads this and says, what the heck is that? Well, it's explained further down in the report. So, it is the second day of the seven year cycle and also separation of the wheat and the tares. Matthew 13, 29 to 30 is the separation of wheat and the tares. Now, see Genesis 1, 6 to 8 leading to the third year. Okay, so it's the second and that's the third year is the resurrection day and we're, this gets into that. So, the reason why I added all this here 
day of resurrection of Jesus Christ, the whole, the only begotten Son of God, God the Son. The tenth year, I started. This was in the report, so I added the Genesis doctrine of the fourteen years that the Holy Spirit showed me in this report. So I took an excerpt and I added to explain this, to make this hopefully easy to understand. Why, if you just read Genesis 1, 6 to 8, it's not going to make sense. You won't get it. It has to be explained. So, this goes to the third year. It's all about separation. It's the soul being separated. And then the third day is the, is the spirit and it is the glory, it is the resurrection. Day of resurrection, so is the, and, and so the uh, second day is the tenth year also third hour that Jesus Christ was on the cross, first resurrection, Matthew 27, 51 to 53. And then the fourth year is day of the seven year cycle, day of the week is the eleventh year. It's the white throne judgment and then the white throne judgment survivors bridging and carry over of that age into the fifth age is the twelfth year, etc. See, new revelations, Bible numerology, timeline properly aligned, end of the seven years have begun, revelations report. Also regarding, this is the excerpt, also regarding the 14 years, excerpt, see revelation. So this here explains how in Genesis, if you have time to read this, and this is going a little bit off topic, but I wanted to do this, and this is a very important verse also regarding Matthew 24, 22, if those days not be shortened. It's very important for this to understand as we get further down here in this paragraph. So, Genesis tells us the, four, the seven year cycles times two. Genesis tells us the 14 years of, of the seven year cycles. Okay, because when God first created, He created on a jubilee year. It was jubilee. It was order out of chaos. It says in Job, it should be written here, Job, I don't know if it is or not, that the, uh, there's, uh, the, the, the morning stars, the angels, they sang when they saw the earth was created because of all the destruction that was occurred in the universe. That was a jubilee day. It was order out of chaos. The creation, the, the, the angels with God, they were rejoicing. That's in Job. Were you there when the angels were rejoicing when they saw, when the when they, uh, the foundation of the earth was 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 laid? So Genesis chapter one one and two and Genesis one to five is also oh here it is Job thirty eight six to seven. Is also the fiftieth year jubilee year, first day, of creation. It's also the eighth year. So, if you're going by that, and that's what it is. 100%, you got 14, you have the full trumpet uh, of Revelation, time of dispensation in Genesis. You follow it all the way along, and you can, you can see this, it ends right here. And you'll see that Genesis, that this is the uh, seventh day is also the 14th day. And they, so you got 14 years here. Because of the um, the duality involved uh, because of the continuing uh, not just duality but the continuing of the seven year cycle God is perfect he began on the seventh day he was right in between the two parts he created right there right when Jesus Christ was resurrected okay so let me write that down so God created in between the two parts okay in between the two parts. Okay? So I'm going to add that in this report also. So, uh, the eternal Sabbath, so that ends here. So the, the seventh year is not mentioned in Leviticus 21, 22. Okay? And when it's, once again, you see here that it is, the seventh day is right here, once again. Okay? So in Leviticus 25, 21 to 22, you see that um, the seventh year is not mentioned. It, it is mentioned spiritually, but not physically. 
Because God himself is also saying we must follow with him and have no excuse for not understanding what the seventh day represents. Also in Leviticus 25, 21 and 22, and Isaiah 37, 30 teaches through the Holy Spirit of Jesus the Christ regarding a carryover of blessings and curses from one seven-year cycle to another, specifically of the three years, to carry over all things from this 49th year, seven cycle, that's the seventh day, to the last jubilee, that's where we were last year, and next seven-year cycle, beginning the next seven-year cycle. So the last jubilee is in the seven-year cycle. In Exodus 12, 6, the Passover, this could be explained a little more with a little more clarity. In Exodus 12, 6, the Passover was to be performed in the 14th day. See, it's, it's all, it all ties in. Everything. The, the, numer it's, the numerology is perfect. There's, there, there is no deviation. God actually uses the very last decimal point in the equation, no matter how many decimal points there are. And that is a Sabbath day. So there's three days, including the Sabbath day, brings us to the end of the second day of the new seven-year cycle. It's a carryover. And that is 2019. Jesus Christ was resurrected in between the Sabbath day and the first day of the week. After three days, three years, and I have to get these two reports there, and the end of the Sabbath day and beginning of the first day of the week, or seven-year cycle, equals in between Bethel and Ai, in between the two parts, in between the two halves of the heifer, in between the two evenings, in between the two thieves on the cross, in between the two covenants. It's all explained in the reports. Also referring to the three days Jesus Christ spent in the heart of the earth ministering. And this is where that happened. And... Isaiah 37.30, And this shall be a sign unto thee, ye shall eat this year such a, that grows of itself. So there you have, in this, this is speaking regarding the Sabbath year. We pray, we enter into the rest of God, what is heard, what God receives, that's what grows of itself. That's us. Reaching into the golden altar with prayer. A good, pleasing, fragrant offering to God, being heard of God because we follow the laws of God. We are disciplined. We are saints. We are holy. We are pure and undefiled and blameless before God. He knows our hearts. He knows the hearts, uh, the desires, and then he uses us accordingly to our own self-will. So, here what we have is you shall eat this year. So Jesus Christ is the first day. Okay? Jesus Christ in the grave. Jonah in the belly of the fish. First day. This shall be a sign unto thee. And the second year, what springs of the same is the vineyard. Jesus Christ went and preached the gospel. And they responded. And in the third year, the third day, you shall sow and shall reap the harvest and shall plant vineyards and shall eat the fruit thereof. That's what Jesus Christ did. He res this is the resurrection, the third day. So, also in Isaiah 37.30 is the sign of Jonah. The first year mentioned is a Sabbath year, and is the first year of the three years. That is flesh of humanity, physical, Revelation 6, 1 and 2, the first horse. The soul is eating the produce, important to understand this, of the flesh. The soul feeds off of the produce of the flesh. What's controlling what? So, if the soul is eating the produce of the flesh, okay, let me just say this, okay, in, in the first covenant, um, the soul is eating the produce of the flesh. The soul will follow the flesh into the heart of the earth, if the soul desires what the sinful flesh sows, in the case of Jesus Christ, the Father desired to put himself in the pit of hell in order to defeat death. Okay, he was blameless and spotless. But he 
had all sin put into him. And he experienced complete separation away from the Father. He was in a pit of hell. I had that vision. I've mentioned that vision. Those vi I had many visions and that it's like yesterday. Where, once again, I saw Jesus Christ, the Spirit. He was a brilliant Spirit. There were demons surrounding. He was on the threshing floor. That is, he was in the pit of hell. And that is the threshing floor. And he was on the ground praying. And these demons were physically also, it's spiritual, but they were, with the power that they had, they're trying to keep, keep him contained in hell. And then what I saw is he flashed, he just... He just, the father, he just flashed right up. He was righteous. And he, he shot right up through them in the midst of them and went to this higher hell, okay, and he preached the gospel to King David, to Solomon, to uh, Samuel, to the prophets, to everyone, and who responded. And whoever he so desired to select, they responded and they were raised on the third day. So, um, in the pit of hell, I forgot to put threshing floor. Okay, in the pit of hell. I'll just do that. Threshing floor. Um, in order to defeat death. Okay? That's why he was there. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 26 says that, um, says that uh, the last enemy to be defeated is death. And that's what, that's what that happened at that time. That was at the end of the age. And preach the gospel to the captives, then free his captives. Luke 41, 18. Then also in Isaiah 37, 30, the second day is separation of the wheat and the tares. That is souls of humanity. Revelation 6, 3 to 4. Also Jubilee Day, that's the year, and it's Jubilee Year also. It's the first, it's the second day of the seven year cycle. You see? So Jesus was to take the Passover. Well, the right Passover was the 14th. It was Sabbath. Okay? They eat the lamb, give up, and, and it's, a, it's a Sabbath. Put up spiritual prayer, meditate, you see, and then the first day is the second day. The first year day of the seven-year cycle is the second day. So there's a carryover. God is using the numbers continuously here. So, then the third day, and this here is the, uh, God also put in my heart that, that Matthew 28, 1 is also the discovery day. This is when they discovered that Jesus was a Sunday. It was the first, it was the, uh, the, the first day of the week that Jesus had risen. They saw him. Hallelujah. Then, the third day is the resurrection day, glorification, spirit of humanity. Okay? We're t this is the Pharaoh. The, the, the flesh, soul, and spirit of humanity, the first three horses, also Pharaoh, not all Pharaoh. Uh, some are men. When God used the word men, he, he, it was, the mind of a man was given to the mind of a man was given it to the to the lion that stood up on his two feet, meant to stand erect. That's the Holy Spirit inside his soul. So God says, when God used the word man, he's speaking regarding a restored soul, renewed in the Holy Spirit of Christ, healthy, thinking soberly. Also is day of the Lord. That's also the day of the Lord. So the third day, resurrection, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, rose of the dead, is also the day of the Lord. It is a resurrection. Now, this is also Revelation 6, 5, and 6. And Revelation 6, 7, and 8 is the fourth dimension, glorification, either of the life of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, or death, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, unholy spirit, that equals a brilliant nuclear war, rising of the phoenix, glorification, as early as 2019. That's what he put in my heart. That's what I put down. Revelation 9, 5, and 6. So, 
And that, once again, is Matthew 24, 22. If those days had not been shortened, no flesh would survive. But if those days will be shortened, but those days will be shortened for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. So, that we're, this seven-year cycle, the seven-year cycle will be cut short. Those 14 days is not going to be 14 days. It's going to be cut short. It's not going to reach the eighth trumpet. The seven trumpet sounds, but that time of dispensation will not will, will not be 14 years. That time of dispensation will be shortened. So, and most of humanity shapeshift. Okay, they carry a mixture all in various degrees. Luke 11, 34, 36. The first four horsemen and so they shapeshift between Lucifer and Jesus the Christ. So, the first four horsemen of Revelation chapter 6 is the four corners of the earth, fourfold judgments of Almighty God. And I, I put here spiritual because we don't want to get into physical bloodshed. Now, Ezekiel 14.21, etc. Also see New Revelation... Uh, Bible New Roman Time of Days Years. Okay, so um, I moved this. Um, so this has to be deleted. I already, I, I, I moved some of this around. Uh, we all, just to get it, try to get a better sequence, we all physically carry our transgressions within us continually until we completely conquer sin, cleansed in our spiritual body, soul, and then glorified spiritually for all eternities. 1 Corinthians 15, 44 to 47, etc. In Exodus 32, 19 to 20, God is a cause and effect God. We reap what we sow, and payback is required. That is why all things are carried over in all times of dispensation in order for all sin to be finally paid back. God is also accomplishing that through his elect martyrs. So here's Lamentations 5, 7. So this was verse I was writing down. So this Lamentations 5.7 is, is, is the cause and effect of those three years, the outcome. Because, once again, the Jubilee year is lined up now after 350 years. And so, all the sin says in Isaiah also, as well as Lamentations 5.7, says that all, we bear all the sins of our forefathers. So everything that's carried over is the entire sin of both covenants. All of it. And it's carried over. And so the martyrs are also getting into heaven through martyrdom. That's what they need in order and that's that's to get both feet where they need, where, where, where the feet need to be. And also God uses it as a witness, again, of what Lucifer does, all through self-will, all through free will. Perfect. It's just perfect. God is perfect. Psalms 118 or, 1, or, or 18 says, as for God, His way is perfect. He is absolutely, God is absolutely holy, absolutely perfect. We cannot fathom that. That's why we have a covenant. That's why things are all according to the covenant. We're perfect according to the covenant, not according to being like God. We have a likeness of Him, but not. we can't be... Uh, we're not God. We're still in our flesh also, and even when we are glorified, we are going to be like Jesus. He says that some will may even be as equal as Jesus. That, but he says, uh, it's not for one to be as equal as his master, or to be like his master. But the servant is not greater than the one who sends him, and his master, of course. Okay, so the student is not above his master. Jesus Christ will always be above. Always. I do not see anyone being as equal. It's impossible to be as equal Jesus in the glorification because the glorification of Jesus Christ was n no sin. He had no temptation, no sin, nothing. 
so he'll always have the greatest glorification. He'll always be above all the time. He'll always be ruler. And that's good news. We need that. We want that. Because this thing that's happening now will never happen again. So, and here it goes on. It's because they're... So, and this, and this goes on. 